Okay, so for the lateral C-spine, there's rotation and tilt that you'll want to evaluate for. And we'll get into specifically head tilt in a minute here, but I'm going to start with just basic rotation and tilt. And the thing that's nice about the lateral C-spine is there's actually a lot of different places that you can look to make sure that you're evaluating appropriately and that the anatomy is situated the way it should be. Um, backtracking for a second, what is the main anatomy that you're looking for on a lateral C-spine? Obviously the spine, and then the anatomy specifically of interest that's seen only in that lateral position is your Z-joints. And again, in lateral position, the side against or closest to the image receptor is always the side of interest. So typically we do laterals left lateral with the C-spine. We could also do right lateral. If you wanted to see a specific set more clearly, that's what you would do is the right lateral for the right, left lateral for the left, okay? Now, the next piece of this is, again, what are the different things that we can look at to know that our lateral is appropriately positioned? So facts about the lateral C-spine just in general. One, they're done at 72 inches. Why? We do it at 72 inches to reduce the magnific magnification that naturally occurs between the image receptor that's in our upright bucky and our shoulder and our neck, okay? Because our shoulder is what will be against the image receptor and there's a natural gap then from where the spine rests to the actual image receptor, okay? So the first thing you can look at is your vertebral bodies. And this you kind of have to use your imagination for, but in an ideal situation for a lateral position, anything that happens rotationally is gonna cause some sort of anterior posterior disconnection. And anything that happens tilt-wise is gonna cause superior and inferior like non-superimposition. So in an ideal image, you're gonna see just individual vertebral bodies. They're just gonna look like squares. And back behind here, you would have the pedicle coming off and a spinous process. But really, just speaking of the vertebral bodies, they would just look like squares, okay? Rotation, again, that's anterior posterior dislocation of the sides of the vertebral body. So it's gonna look what I call like an ice cube because you have a 3D effect now happening and it's typically in that posterior portion. In my class, I'm not gonna make you decide if the right or the left is situated anterior to the adjacent side. I just need you to know that if your spine comes up looking like ice cubes, where you can see two sets of posterior portions of that vertebral body, that you know when your image is taken, you can straighten them back out, get their MCP perpendicular to the IR, and that will resolve this issue, okay? So vertebral bodies for rotation will show up like ice cubes. Again, like it's just something I call it. It's definitely not a technical term. Tilt, on the other hand, is going to show superior inferior um, displacement between the ideal that looks just like a square. And now with tilt, you're going to see the articulating surfaces of that superior or posterior portion of the vertebrae. So I call tilt the vertebrae how they look like marshmallows because I can see that articulating surface and it looks, instead of flat, it has like an oval shape to it, okay? So ice cubes are your rotational errors for the vertebral bodies with anterior posterior displacement. Tilt is going to show up like marshmallows, going to have that superior inferior displacement. Also with rotation, you aren't necessarily going to have your joint spaces close because it's not causing that flexion side to side, not closing the gap. Tilt, however, does. So tilt, you can also tell because of that 
intervertebral disc space showing closed. Okay? So now we're going to say that the vertebral bodies, you feel kind of okay with what they're looking like, but you're not totally sold on if this is a rotational problem or if it's a tilt problem. So the next thing you can look at is the Z joints. And if you pull up a lateral image, and I'll try to throw one in here, but if you look at a typical image, going down the C-spine, there should just be individual Z joints. And Z joints, again, are created by that connection or articulation between the superior articular process and the inferior articular process. So when they are appropriately set up, you're just going to have a single line in between the vertebrae. So there would be one Z joint for C2, 3, one Z joint for 3, 4, one Z joint for 4, 5, so on and so forth. But again, in rotation, and you have a Z joint on the right side and the left side of your vertebrae, again, in rotation, there's going to be displacement of those Z joints. And in um, lateral, the rotation will cause, just like it did with the vertebrae bodies, it's going to cause anterior posterior displacement. Like this, you'll have two Z joints side by side. Okay? So this would indicate that that patient's rotated, again, because when there's rotation, they'll move in front of and behind one another, okay? A tilt, you're gonna start to see what looks kind of like a ladder for every set of vertebrae, C2, 3, for example. Instead of seeing a single line, you'll see two lines stacked one on top of the other, okay? And again, in general, right now, I'm not going to say which way they're tilted. I just know that because it looks like rungs of a ladder going up, I know that that patient's head or body needs to be tilted and not firmly planted in a true lateral position. Okay? Same thing. Another thing you can look at, I should say, your mandible. Your mandible should be essentially superimposed, if I'm being very honest with you. There would be a slight disconnect where you'd see a slight second layer, simply because the side away from the image receptor would be slightly magnified, but they should be pretty darn close to superimposing one another. Okay? But just like everything else we've talked about so far, you can tell rotation or tilt displacement based off of how are they each side, I should say, the bodies and rami of the mandible, how are they related to one another? Again, if one's anteriorly or posteriorly situated, but they are living on the same plane, and by that I mean I could take a horizontal line and draw it over the tops of them. If they both hit that line, that would be not tilt, but rotation, okay? Same thing. On tilt, now we have that superior-inferior separation. I could draw a vertical line up and down, and they're on the same plane side to side, so I know it's not rotation, but one is higher than the other, so that's a tilt problem. And that's something I could do all the, all the way across all of these pieces of anatomy. I should, in theory, be able to draw a horizontal line at the top of my Z joint, and a vertical line through the most anterior portion of my Z joint and only see one. You're not seeing anything above or below, but if I do this across the Z joint column, if I chose this Z joint and I drew a line across the top, that's a bad line, and a vertical line down the most anterior portion, I can see that the other Z joint adjacent to it is at the same level superior and inferiorly, so I know that there's no tilt problem, but I can also see that it's situated in front of the other Z joint, so there is a rotational error, okay? So then again, the last thing that you can look at if it's, um, if it's visualized because of your technical settings is your EMS or your external acoustic meatuses. They should be, again, essentially superimposed. Same concept as the rest of this board. With this image, 
in rotation, your eames would sit anteriorly and posteriorly to one another when there was rotation. So I could use that same little horizontal and vertical line trick. My horizontal line touching the tops of the two. I can't draw lines today, so sorry about that. But my line going across the two tells me there's not any tilt because they're on the same level. And if I pick one of the two eames and I draw a vertical line at the anterior portion of it, I can see the other one is situated in front of it. And that's telling me, yet again, that there is rotation. And in this next set, I'm just gonna pick this inferior one. If I were to draw a line horizontal and vertical, I can see one isn't situated in front of one, of one another. They are living on the same vertical plane, so there's no rotation. However, there is tilt because I can see one situated above or superior to the other one. Okay, so we got tilt as like a collective whole. We can check the mandible, we can check the eames, we can check the Z joints, we can check pretty much everything, the vertebral bodies, there's a lot of different aspects and we can see that superior and inferior displacement. But for the head tilt, specifically towards or away from the IR, there's really only one thing that you're going to want to focus on because that's going to tell you which way the head was tilted. And that is the posterior arch of C1. And this is where you get to see my lack of artistic ability. But I did my best. So here we go. This is somebody in a lateral position. And this is your ideal situation, okay? You have the skull the two mandible rami coming down. Notice how they unify and become almost one line at the inferior portion. C1 comes off and it's a solid unified little knob at the end. I always say it's a boot. I don't know why, it just helps me. But it's one individual piece superimposing itself, okay? When your patient's tilted their head towards the image receptor, you're going to see an opening or a hole in the posterior arch of C1. So it just looks like a black negative space. It's darker than the surrounding area. Okay, so that's the posterior arch of C1 opening up so that you can actually see the hole, the foreman of that posterior arch. Okay, because remember it's just a ring. C1. So when they're tilted towards the IR, that ring is going to open up and your CR is going to travel through it. Okay? When someone's tilted away from the image receptor, the opposite will happen. You'll see, I always think of, and this might resonate with some people and not others, depending on where you're watching from, but if you remember those kind of big soft mint candies that were white, and then there's that kind of swirling ribbon through the middle of it. That's kind of what tilting your head away from the image receptor looks like because there's just this band that goes through the middle. So you can see three lines. Again, in your ideal situation, just a top line, a bottom line. It's one unified structure. And when it's in this tilt position away from the image receptor, you see a top line, a bottom line, and then a ribbon or a middle line going through the center, okay? So I'm gonna take a second and show images of actual x-rays of each of these. One ideal, one away from the image receptor, one towards the image receptor. Then I'll come back and explain it a little further, okay? Okay, so explaining this a little bit deeper, making it make a little bit more sense. So if I am the patient, and you're just gonna have to assume this is my little fake cassette. In this projection, my cassette would be living right here. Okay, so that's 
where I want you to imagine this the rest of this exercise. This is the side of my face against the IR, okay? So your central ray is coming in at C4, so about mid-neck. So when somebody is in proper position and your CR is aimed at C4, what really happens at the posterior arch is your CR is actually angling up slightly because your central ray is the only perpendicular portion of that ray and it's going straight to C4. So anything above that has a slight cephalic type of direction to it and anything below that has a slight caudal angle to it. So what you want to imagine is I'm going to use this ring to signify my posterior arch. And remember, in this scenario, I have an image receptor on this side of my spine. So this is my posterior arch. I'm aiming at C4. So this is C1. C4 is below C1. The rays are coming at a slight cephalic angle just due to actual positioning and how we enter our central ray at C4. It's just facts. C4 is below C1, okay? So coming at this slight upward angle, again, image receptor is over here. If I tilt my head towards the image receptor, this green stick represents my CR. It's able to travel through that posterior arch. That's what opens it. We learned in previous chapters that the way to open a joint space or a fracture or any type of foramen is your CR has to be able to pass through it, which can only happen if your CR is parallel to that space, fracture, foramen, etc. So again, IR here, I tilt my posterior arch towards the image receptor and my CR can travel through it. So when you take your image, you can visually see that opening in that posterior arch. When I tilt my head away from the image receptor, my CR bumps into that first side and it will eventually hit the other side. So the separation due to magnification of these two sides is what shows that banded middle, but shows there's no opening. That's the difference. So if you're able to look at your image for your C-spine in lateral position and you're able to see a hole or a foramen in the posterior portion of C1, you know that that has to be the head tilted towards the image receptor because if it were tilted away, it would just hit the side of that posterior arch and you wouldn't see that. So that kind of helps break down why you would see the opening versus why you wouldn't see the opening. And again, look back at those pictures I posted a few seconds ago and look at those differences and that should help you put together what each image actually ends up looking like.